Come on in. Welcome to Idle Down, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're talking about the longest challenges in Survivor history. Since Survivor's very first season, lengthy tests of endurance have been one of the show's most popular challenge formats. Hold onto this beam the longest. Hold your arm up in the air as long as you can. Stand still and don't take your top off. Oh, Jenna, I said don't. These challenges are true tests of willpower. Whoever wants it bad enough will win. Your ninth grade English teacher might even call them a character versus self conflict. The battle is all mental. But what happens when someone has a little too much character? Some survivor challenges, particularly endurance challenges, and particularly in the early days, have been known to go a long time. A really long time. So today, I thought it would be fun to take a look at the longest lasting challenges in survivor history, endurance or not. Some quick housekeeping. I'll be keeping this to US survivor seasons only. Additionally, there are well over a thousand survivor challenges, and not all of them, even endurance challenges, display the time elapsed. Some say nothing, some use alternative units of time measurement. So this won't be an exact science. I'm fairly confident I've tracked down the five longest challenges ever, and I'm very confident in my top three. But look, there's a lot of challenges, okay? Finally, I'll also be excluding the SOS and shelter building challenges, for obvious reasons. The players were given a set time to build a structure at their camp, and sometimes that was even overnight. And I don't really think it's in the spirit of the video to include them. Everything else is fair game though. So go ahead and stretch out those digits, put your hand on a hard idol, and run out of matches as we count down the longest lasting challenges in Survivor history. At number five is the final 10 immunity challenge in Survivor David vs. Goliath, which ran for just over five and a half hours. Otherwise known as the challenge where Christian rambles himself into an immunity win, this particular challenge may be my personal favorite of all time. It's eight minutes of survivor perfection. This challenge, called Uncomfortably Numb, is simple. Hold a handle above your head with both hands, stand on a narrow perch, and go as long as possible. It sounds simple, and it is but you could not write a better, more exciting, more dramatic, and more humorous challenge showdown if you tried. Hour after hour, players drop out one by one, retiring under the sit-out bench in the Fijian heat until only Christian and Alec remain. Christian realizes that Jeff is a captive audience and so asks the questions any super fan would ask when they have the undivided attention of Jeff Probst. Do you know what a Reuben sandwich is, Jeff? Christian literally filibusters the challenge in a brilliantly edited montage of inane chatter. This is the ultimate David versus Goliath showdown. An incredible payoff of the season's theme, the stakes of which could not be higher for both of these guys. Alec was very much the consensus target this round, but Christian was also an ever-present threat in the minds of the Goliath majority. Towards the end of the challenge, when Alec desperately appeals to Christian to let him win, we feel the emotional weight of this. Alec knows his game is over if he loses, and Christian knows it too. After five and a half hours, Alec unexpectedly steps down and Christian wins. The producers immediately knew they had gold here. They even gave their challenge editor extra time to edit the challenge and gave it a larger than usual percentage of the episode runtime, turning an already incredible showdown into one of the greatest and most memorable challenges in Survivor history. The thing is though, this challenge should have never even gone on this long. Future versions of this challenge would require the players to keep their backs straight against the perch, cutting down the runtime significantly. In Survivor 42, this challenge lasted 12 minutes, and also had far fewer questions about Reuben sandwiches. 
At number four are two iterations of When It Rains, It Pours from Survivor Africa and Survivor Micronesia, which both ran slightly over six hours. This is a classic Survivor challenge, having appeared in some iteration or another in nearly a dozen US seasons. Again, a challenge which could not be simpler. Hold your arm above your head as long as possible. If you drop or move your arm even a little, the bucket of shame drops and you're out of the challenge. This challenge's first appearance in Survivor Africa set the record, with T-Bird and Clarence going six hours before reaching a stalemate. When a desperate Clarence proposes a game of rock, paper, scissors to decide the winner. Good old rock. Nothing beats that. Paper comes rock. No. I would rarely endorse this, but I think Clarence should have ran with scissors. This challenge appeared again as an individual immunity challenge at the final nine of Survivor Micronesia, where again, a rather poor deal is struck by the player in trouble. Parvati and a very much on the ropes Jason outlast challenge beasts like Ozzy, Amanda, and James, going an impressive six hours with their hands held above their heads, like the most annoying kid in class. Jeff routinely tries to tempt them with food to no avail, until an offer of sharing a platter of pizza, donuts, and beer with the tribe for whoever steps down piques Jason's interests. Excuse me, piques Parvati's interests on Jason's behalf. Parvati suggests Jason step down to make some friends, and in one of the most underrated dumb moves of all time, Jason for some reason entertains Parvati's appeal. Jason is the obvious next boot, and the only person really outside of this massive majority alliance. But if Jason's gonna step off, he needs a guarantee, no, a promise from everyone that they won't vote him out next if he does this. And they all give Jason their word, as it always does. James's face says it all. After six long hours going toe to toe with Parvati, Jason steps off. And okay, he doesn't actually go home here, but he still should have stuck this one out for as long as possible. He naively thought this group of women would not lie to him. This group of women. At number three is the Merge Immunity Challenge in Survivor Australia, which ran for 10 hours and 17 minutes, with Kucha and Ogacore at a deadlocked 5-5 at the Merge, and with control of the post-merge at stake, this challenge to just stand on a perch as long as possible is perhaps the most pivotal challenge of the season. There are two players in particular highly incentivized to outlast the rest and resist Jeff's food temptations, Keith and Jeff Varner, who both have had votes cast against them previously. Past votes was how tiebreakers were decided in the early days of Survivor. Yes, I'm sure these two will be going the distance and... Oh. We lose a few people early on, but most of the players stick things out an impressive seven hours. It's at this point that both Jerry and Amber jump in when Jeff offers them chocolate and ice cream, which these two have definitely not been talking about for days now as some sort of thinly veiled metaphor for something. Not a thinly veiled metaphor in sight. I may be a lot of things, but I ain't no Hershey bar. <laughs> As day turns to night, the challenge goes on far longer than anyone could have imagined. And Jeff, at this point still little more than an intern they rescued from Rock and Roll Jeopardy, is sent out in neck high water to light the challenge himself. And so it continues. Elizabeth drops out at the nine hour mark, leaving Tina, Keith, and Alicia to battle it out. An hour later, Alicia calls it quits, and Keith asks Tina to step down as well, believing that he will be in the Kucha crosshairs. After nearly ten and a half grueling hours, Keith wins the season's first individual immunity. This challenge went so long that the tribe is just sent straight to tribal council from this challenge, where Jeff Varner, who had votes cast against him previously and who stepped out of the challenge for peanut butter, is sent packing. For several years, this was Survivor's longest challenge ever, an exciting marathon full of things we can probably all get behind. 
an epic showdown of willpower between players, tons of peanut butter, and Jeff Varner losing in embarrassing fashion. It has it all. At number two is the final immunity challenge of Survivor Palau, which ran 11 hours and 55 minutes. When you think of long Survivor challenges, this is almost certainly the one that comes to mind. This challenge, Baba Booey, is again a simple endurance challenge that turned into an incredible battle. The final three players, Tom, Katie, and Ian, have to stand on a buoy bobbing in the ocean. Last one left standing wins. That's it. Playtesters ran this one for about an hour, which is about the standard time for your average endurance challenge, I'd say. So imagine their surprise when it went hour after hour after hour. Probst going from standing to sitting to laying down. Katie lasts an impressive five hours, far beyond anyone's expectations for anyone in this challenge, but still somehow ends up looking like a chump next to Tom and Ian. As Jeff recently recounted on his podcast, as day becomes night about five or six hours in, production is panicking because they don't have a way to light this challenge. They never thought this would go until nightfall. So the crew begins to light it by fire, but Tom complains that this wasn't in the rules and he's getting smoke in his eyes. The implication being, if I lose because of this fire, you'll be catching a lawsuit before I leave the jury house. Eventually, they got a generator and lights out to light the challenge, just in time for the negotiations to begin around hour eight. It's at this point that Tom tells Ian he should step down on the promise that Tom will take him to final tribal council. I'm still not sure if Tom would have kept his word if Ian actually jumped off here. Probably, but it doesn't matter. Ian was never coming down on Tom's terms. They both stick things out to five minutes shy of 12 hours. When Ian makes Tom an offer, he really couldn't refuse. Ian's offer is, if he steps down, he wants Tom to take Katie to final tribal council. Through a series of late game betrayals, Ian had recently lost the friendship and respect of his two closest allies. And with his integrity on the line, he sacrifices his game to mend these personal relationships. And so 11 hours and 55 minutes after they stepped onto these buoys, Tom wins the challenge and Jeff hosts an impromptu tribal council right then and there, where Ian becomes the final member of the jury. This is often inaccurately regarded as the longest challenge in the show's history, when in fact, the very next challenge would dwarf it by double. At number one is the opening reward challenge of Survivor Guatemala, which took approximately 24 hours, making this far and away the longest challenge in Survivor history. Now, I know there's some debate about whether or not this constitutes a challenge, but I firmly believe it does because, well, Jeff says so. All right, let's get to your first challenge. It is for reward. This reward challenge was for Flint and the right to live in the better camp amongst the Mayan ruins instead of the Guatemalan jungle. The challenge, an absolutely brutal 11 mile hike through the jungles of Guatemala to the victor's camp. Though it may be unconventional, this is a challenge with a reward. So it's a reward challenge. And this thing wasn't your average day hike, unless your day hikes usually end like this. In which case, I'd suggest hanging up the hiking boots and taking up an indoor hobby. This was a grueling, slow crawl through the thick, untamed jungle in 100 plus degree heat. The player's only guidance, a map and a compass. In one of the least surprising turns in history, both tribes get lost, leading to dual overnight stays in the jungle. Throughout the challenge, both tribes, but particularly Nakum, suffer major injuries. A thorny tree falls on Blake's shoulder, Bobby John nearly passes out from dehydration, Judd returns to the bog from whence he came. Thankfully, both tribes have a leader to help guide them through this brutal hike. Former Marine Jim helps Nakum read their compass and guides them along the right path. 
and humble landscaper Gary Hawkins helps Yasha escape their way through this land. Oh, he's practically salivating. Oh yeah, baby, I could scape this land so good. Ultimately, Nakum wins the challenge in a surprisingly narrow victory after approximately 24 hours, but at what cost? Bobby John, Blake, Jim, and Judd are all alarmingly dehydrated, which directly results in their loss at the next immunity challenge. The 24-hour overnight 11-mile hike is both survivors' longest and for my money, most brutal challenge of all time, and definitely one you can show to anyone who ever wants to question the integrity or reality of this show. This is about as real as it comes. Well, other than this. I feel like it's getting the best of me. Got nothing else for ya. You can go ahead and hike your mouse 11 inches over to the subscribe button to like and subscribe, and I'll get you more Survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.